In a previous episode, Lieutenant Colonel Ishiwara Kanji unleashed the Mukden Incident. If you want to know more about that, check out The Mukden Incident, It's Ishiwara's War for more information. On September the 18th of 1931, the Japanese performed a false flag operation, detonating explosives over the South Manchurian Railway near Mukden, before 500 Kwangtung soldiers stormed the Peiteing Barracks, defended by 7,000 men of Jiang Shuliang's forces. Jiang Shuliang was in Beiping on September the 18th, in his capacity as North China Garrison Commander. Those around him, including Chiang Kai-shek, advised him to order his men not to resist, to hide away all weapons and try to retreat westwards if possible. Chiang Kai-shek knew the Japanese were trying to provoke a full-on war with China, one they could not possibly hope to win at this time. China required more time to gather and train her forces to face such an enemy. For his part, Jiang Shuliang was well aware of how weak his forces were and he sought to retain a sizable army, thus the orders were in his best interest. Both men also believed the League of Nations or perhaps the Wakatsuki cabinet would step in to restrain the unlawful occupation. During the battle at the Beitaying Barracks, 500 Chinese soldiers were killed, countless surrendered, others fled as the Japanese destroyed the barracks and a small air force there. Hey everyone, I just wanted to let you know I now have a Patreon account found at www.patreon.com slash the Pacific War channel. Over there you can find exclusive Patreon episodes and podcasts based on suggestions from patrons, and other benefits like early access to all of my content, live hangouts, your name in the end credits, and much, much more. So please go check it out. Meanwhile, Ishiwara pressured a hesitant General Shigeru Honjo to request reinforcements and freedom of action from Tokyo HQ. Tokyo HQ reiterated orders to not expand the hostilities, but Ishiwara and his colleague Itagaki had worked too hard to stop now. Ishiwara's plan was to overwhelm all potential centers of enemy resistance and occupy all of Manchuria with or without the support of high command. Seeking to expand the hostilities through official channels, Ishiwara fomented civil disturbances in major cities while stating to Tokyo HQ the Kwangtung army had to protect Japanese residents in said areas. The first place hit was Kirin. Ishiwara and his fellow officers threatened to resign if Hanjo did not order an attack against Kirin, and Hanjo buckled. The second division of General Tamanjiro advanced by rail and captured nearly every city en route to Kirin, where his force entered without firing a shot, forcing the local Chinese military commander to proclaim the independence of the province from Jiang Shuliang. Hours later, on September the 21st, the commander, Hayashi Senjiro, on his own initiative ordered the Korea army to cross the border to reinforce Manchuria. The weeks after the Mukden incident saw widespread cooperation between the Japanese invaders and local Chinese leaders. Some areas saw valiant fighting, but it was not coordinated well and held little overall effect. The Kwangtung army, meanwhile, had relatively few troops in an area over 350,000 square miles large, with a population of 30 million, and thus could not hope to conquer it through sheer force alone. Thus Ishiwara planned to form alliances with local strongmen, and this was encouraged heavily by the Nanjing government, who ordered Jiang Shuliang to not resist and to await negotiations. Bolstered by their success at Kirin, Mukden was taken in just a day's time. The Japanese reported, the people stood in the streets, as if they were watching a festival. At Mukden, the eastern border's garrison commander, Yu Jishan, immediately allied with the Japanese. The governor of Liaoning, Zhang Jiyi, refused to cooperate in establishing a collaborationist government. So the Japanese imprisoned him and installed Colonel Tohara Kenji as mayor of Mukden, who ruled the city with an emergency committee composed mostly of Japanese until October the 20th when the post was handed over to Zhao Jinbo, a legal advisor to the Kwangtung army. Zhang Chun took a bit longer. On September the 23rd, the Japanese ordered the forces in Jilin to surrender. Their acting commander, Xi Xia, agreed, though some of his soldiers fought, leading to the deaths of 200 Chinese soldiers and 10 civilians. On September the 24th, Xi Xia dissolved the old government and proclaimed independence with himself as governor. Jiang Jinghui declared the Harbin Special Zone Autonomous, Ji Xing surrendered the Yanbian Korean Autonomous Prefecture area, and the former governor of Liaoning Province, Zhang Ji was released from prison and immediately declared the new autonomous province of Fangtian. By the end of September, the Japanese occupied major cities such as Liaoyang, 
Yingko, Fushan, Mukden, Siping, Dangdong, Changchun, Jian, Jiaohe, and Dunhua. Jiang Shiliang's forces surrendered, fled, and many actively cooperated by creating independence movements. Roughly 60,000 men of Jiang Shiliang's forces would surrender and be recruited en masse into the Japanese cooperative forces, alongside Hong Huzi and civilians. Meanwhile, because the governor, Wan Fulin, of Heilongjiang province was in Beiping, leaving no one with authority to deal with the Japanese, Jiang Shiliang appointed General Ma Jiaishan as acting chairman and military commander-in-chief of Heilongjiang province on October the 16th. General Ma Jiaishan arrived at the capital, Jichihar, on the 19th and began personally inspecting the troops and defensive positions. Multiple parties sought to surrender and join the Japanese, but Ma Jiaishan declared, I am appointed as chairman of the province, and I have the responsibility to defend the province, and I will never be a surrendering general. General Ma Jiaishan chose to disobey the Kuomintang's orders not to resist the Japanese. General Zhang Haipang of the 2nd Provincial Defense Brigade at Taunan had taken command of the local forces, including the Xing'an Reclamation Army, to declare the district independent from China. This was done in return for a large shipment of weapons from Japan. Zhang Haipang's first political move would be to attack Ma Jiaishan. Lieutenant General Tai Monjiro requested Zhang Haipang capture Hiliangjiang thereupon later to invite the Japanese to assist them in governance. On October the 13th, Chiang Haipeng ordered three regiments of the new Husengan Reclamation Army under General Xu Jingyong to capture Qixihar, the capital of Hiliangjiang. Some elements of Qixihar surrendered peacefully. However, Xu Jingyong's advance guard with an engineering company was attacked by forces led by General Du Liangfang defending the North Bank. Jiang Haipang's men were forced to flee, suffering heavy casualties. During the battle, Ma Jiaishan had his forces use dynamite to damage the Nanjiang Railroad Bridge. The Japanese began to repeatedly demand Ma Jiaishan allow them to repair the bridge, but he continuously refused, and he had his forces defend the area near Daxing, preventing Jiang Haipang's men from proceeding north. A stalemate soon emerged where the two forces would fight in the Daxing area. On November the 3rd, Ma Jiaishan reached a compromise with the Japanese to end hostilities and allow the bridge to be repaired. On November the 4th, Ma Jiaishan sent subordinates to accompany Major Hayashi Yoshihide, so that the Japanese might begin work, and so that I could order my army to start to retreat. Ma Jiaishan gave assurances that the Japanese repairing the operation would not be interfered with, meanwhile telegramming his subordinates, Paint all of Manchuria red with the blood of Japanese troops. A force of 800 Japanese led by Major General Shogo Hasebe with his repair crews came to the area to find Daxing a war zone. Shogo found Ma Jiaishan's subordinate on the ground, Xu Baojin, and demanded the fighting cease so they could repair the bridge. Xu Baojin said he never received any orders to cease fighting. The Japanese claimed the nearby 2,500 Chinese troops of Ma Jiaishan began opening fire upon them using rifles and machine guns. The Japanese returned fire likewise, and Japanese aircraft began strafing the Chinese, forcing them to retreat towards Qixihar. The Chinese would suffer 120 casualties, the Japanese 15. The Japanese then sent word to Ma Jiaishan, demanding he make true on his promise. But Ma Jiaishan responded that of his 15,000 troops, he could only nominally control about a third. Ma Jiaishan then sent a telegram to the League of Nations reading this. I am helpless. I have exhausted all attempts to preserve peace. I have strictly instructed my commanders to act only on the defensive, and that they must not attack. But Major Hayashi has seen this behavior by the Japanese military, and not only has not stopped it, but on the contrary, wants our army to withdraw from Hiliangjiang province, so that they can carve up the whole lot. Since the 4th, the Japanese army has started to attack our army. They are coordinating land and air attacks, carrying out utterly horrible bombings. The battle area widened to Qixihar, and by November the 5th, Ma Jiaishan had 400 killed and 300 wounded, but he refused to surrender. On November the 15th, General Hanzhe Shigeru sent a list of demands that Ma Jiaishan's troops withdraw north of Qixihar, Hiliangjiang must declare independence, and Ma Jiaishan must resign. Ma Jiaishan refused the demands and launched a counterattack, trying to dislodge the Japanese from the bridge area. But now the Japanese were being supported by tanks and heavy artillery. 
By 2 p.m. on November the 16th, the Japanese began an offensive that would soon overwhelm his forces. 3,500 Japanese troops of the 2nd Division led by General Temanjiro attacked 8,000 defenders at Chishihar along a 5-mile front around the heights of Sanchenfeng, south of Tangqi. Japanese cavalry charged the Chinese front line, followed up by infantry. Ma Jiaishan's right flank held them back as his cavalry tried to encircle the Japanese right flank. But the Japanese tanks, artillery, and aerial support repelled them. The Japanese superior firepower would win the day. As Ma Jiaishan stated, The Japanese had four cavalry units who ran amok everywhere, and they used two aeroplanes to bomb Shichihar into submission through terror. The merchants were utterly terrified, making pleas that the areas where they were should be avoided, so as to prevent misery amongst the people. The civilian population pushed Ma Jiaishan to pull out, a long-held Chinese tradition that did not mean to lose face, but rather living to fight another day. On November the 18th, Ma Jiaishan's forces evacuated Chichihar, and by the 19th, he led them east to defend Bai Quan and Haidewen. His army suffered tremendous casualties, possibly up to 3,000, with the Japanese claiming 300 casualties for themselves. Ma Jiaishan's forces then retired to the Noni River Valley, and eventually over the Soviet border. The Japanese began an occupation of Chichihar, thus securing control over all three Manchurian provincial capitals. They quickly established a collaborationist government under General Jiang Jinghui and secured control over the central section of the Chinese Eastern Railway. However, the eastern section of the railway was still under the control of General Qing Chao, operating out of Harbin. Qing Chao would follow up Ma Jiaishan's example, inspiring local Chinese to aid and enlist in the resistance effort. Ma Jiaishan drew international attention through a series of telegrams he sent describing his campaign of resistance against the Japanese in Heilongjiang. His stand along the Noni River near Chichihar lionized him amongst the Chinese nationalists who sought to use his public image to shame Chiang Kai-shek into action against the Japanese. The unofficial war between China and Japan had only just begun.